This video is concerning Dr. Burgos' uh, video, Jesus isn't the Father. And in the first slide, he says that uh, Dr. Bernard, who is a oneness preacher, that he does not interpret Isaiah 9-6 correctly. But, as we're going to see, Dr. Burgos is 100% wrong. Explicitly. Um, in light of Isaiah 9-6, uh, the famous oneness Pentecostal theologian uh, David K. Bernard, he says, clearly, Isaiah 9, 6 teaches that Jesus is the one Father incarnate. And so that's typically the teaching of oneness Pentecostals, that uh, Jesus is God the Father incarnate, um, that Jesus is God the Father manifested in human flesh. That's why, what oneness Pentecostals mean when they say God manifest in human flesh, this kind of thing. Uh, and the proof text that is offered by Oneness Pentecostals is always Isaiah 9 6, which, you know, is interesting. I mean, if Jesus is really God the Father, you would expect, you know, maybe the, the Bible to say that somewhere. And Oneness Pentecostals will, will object, saying, of course it says it in Isaiah 9 6. It says that Jesus is the everlasting Father. And as we're going to see, this assumes some things which I think are completely ridiculous and erroneous. And so let's think. Dr. Burgos says that the interpretation given by Dr. Bernard and other oneness theologians is ridiculous. That's what he says. Because Bernard says that Jesus is God the Father incarnate. There's nothing wrong with that because Isaiah 9 6 says that the child that is born, the child that is given, his name shall be called Everlasting Father. And there cannot be two everlasting fathers in eternity. Or um, whatever other title you want to say, if, if it says in Isaiah 9, 6, then that is what the child is. His name shall be called. If his name is called, that is because that, that is who he is. So, Dr. Burgos is totally wrong in this, uh, saying that it is ridiculous. Point. If Jesus is not God the Father, then he is another God, or a, a, a second God. And that goes against monotheism. You see, Trinitarians have been saying for a long time that they believe in only one God and three persons. But when they explain the scriptures, they clearly teach that there was more than one God. They will not admit to it, but this is a perfect case. If you say that Jesus is not the Father or God the Father, then who is He? He's a second God or another God. And of course, Trinitarians say God the Son, which is not even biblical. So no, you cannot deny that Jesus uh, is not the Father. You cannot deny this, because then you're teaching more than one God. Now, here in this slide, uh, Dr. Burgos makes an example of Del Tuggy, who is a Unitarian. And this is one of the only times that I agree with Dr. Burgos, because he uses this example. He says that Unitarians say that Jesus is the mighty God, but not the almighty God. And of course that's wrong. And, and uh, Dr. Burgos explains that in a few chapters down, Isaiah 10, Yahweh is called the mighty God. And, and then he says, welcome to Trinitarianism. No, believing that, that God is mighty or almighty, believing that Jesus is the mighty God or the almighty God, is not Trinitarianism. It is believing that there is only one God. Uh, honestly, Trinitarians do not believe that Jesus Christ is God. They believe that He's a begotten God. And we got to get that straight because they are trying to th throw one uh, in our eyes, making us believe that they believe that Jesus is God. No, they teach that Jesus is a begotten God, which is not the same. And this is not welcome to Trinitarianism. This is welcome to the truth that Jesus Christ is Almighty God. Himself. And sometimes subordinationists like, uh, you know, like this guy on Twitter, Dale Tuggy, uh, who is, you know, attempting to follow in the steps of Anthony Buzzard, except without any training or understanding of the Bible at all. <laughs> at least, uh, at least uh, Buzzard had some mediocre training at best, right? Uh, couldn't have been that great because of his theology, but. But nonetheless, what Tuggy would say is, yeah, Jesus is the mighty God, but he's not the almighty God, right? And then 
you know, you always point to those kinds of folks and say, well, if mighty God means anything less than almighty God, you got a problem because in the very next chapter in Isaiah 10 and verse 21, uh, Yahweh is called mighty God, right? And so uh, all the Unitarians go, oh, snap, we got to rethink this thing. And it's like, yeah, welcome to Trinitarianism. And then it, it uh, gives this title, Everlasting Father, and this is the, the one of relevance here. Uh, Everlasting Father is the Hebrew phrase Avi Ab, and um, you know, real literally, the phrase is Father of Eternity. Now, the revelation of God as Father that is present within the Old Testament is not the explicit, explicit relational kind of fatherhood that is revealed within the teaching of Christ. So what I'm arguing here is that the identification of God as Father has more to do with creation than it does the sort of relational fatherhood that is revealed in the ministry and the person and work of Christ. Uh, and therefore, the fatherhood of God revealed by Christ, ha having been intrinsically sort of tied to his identity as the Son, obviously, uh, and his redemptive work that made possible, say, adoption, the adoption of sinners, uh, to be sons and daughters um, is 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 a New Testament teaching, and so that's not obviously that's not present in the New Testament, and therefore we shouldn't expect that kind of thing here in Isaiah. Uh, and so, subsequently, it's unlikely that what is being communicated by Isaiah is something akin to the New Testament construal of the fatherhood of God. Although uh, it is certainly not impossible, since theoretically this is you know Isaiah is, is a prophetic description of the um, of the father uh, I mean of the uh, son of God and um, you know maybe it could be prophetically portraying the Christology down the line it, it could be uh, I think though Isaiah is writing to us a, a group of people in a specific point of time and I I don't think that we can assume that the full New Testament construal of the fatherhood of God is in view here but now, on this final slide, I'm going to prove that Dr. Burgos is totally wrong using the same example that he used with Dale Tuggy uh, of the mighty God as to being uh, a few verses down that Yahweh or God the Father was mighty God. This thing, uh, Dr. Burgos, this is where we see that he is not following through and, and really honestly looking for the truth of the gospel. No, he's standing on his own beliefs. He's, he's interpreting everything by his own beliefs and will not allow anything else. But anyway, Isaiah 9, 6, uh, he says, does not really tie with the New Testament. Uh, he said, unlikely that Isaiah is relating to the fatherhood of God. And prophetically, this could be Christology and all this stuff. But no, wrong. We're going to show you that he's wrong because Isaiah 9, 6 says that, that the Son is the everlasting Father. And Dr. Burgos doesn't realize that a few chapters down, it says that God of the Old Testament is the everlasting Father. I'm talking about Isaiah 63, 16. Let me read it to you. Doubtless thou art our father, though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledges, acknowledge us not. Thou, O Lord, art our father, our Redeemer, thy name is from everlasting so here we have the everlasting father is god himself the almighty god father the father and so when when an isaiah 9 6 uses that example for the son he's exactly saying that the son is the father or that the father was in the son whichever way you want to say it the bible has clear explanations of this jesus says said the father that dwelleth in me the 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 Father who abides in me. In other words, the Father who lives inside of me. So Jesus was both God and man. And in the, in the God portion was not a second begotten God. No, He was the life of God. He was the Father that came and manifested as the Son of God in the New Testament.